up, y'all? Welcome back to Behind the Real. Uh, today we have another special guest. You may recognize him from All American. Welcome, Omar Cook. What's up? What's up? So thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. You know. Yeah, time. absolutely. Uh, excited to have you here on the show. Um, I want to get right into it because your your background. I was doing a little research, um, and it, it seemed just so interesting to me. So I would love to know. How on earth did you go from being a professional football player to getting into acting? Yeah, man, it's uh, it's, it's crazy. You know, um, I was uh, coaching football. I was coaching college football. And um, I was playing professional football at the same time, um, indoor football. And um, right after my season in 2019, um, the team or Game Changing Films reached out to me to do uh, a scene with Ballers, HBO. And um, actually the year before, they actually reached out to do an audition for them. And I was coaching at the time. And so I wasn't like, I was like, nah, I'm not gonna go to no audition to uh, probably not get the job, whatever, and miss my day of job, you know what I mean? So I turned it down. Um, I had been working with Madden, um, the video game series uh, since 2017. Um, that I actually got through going to an audition um, through my football agent. So I really wasn't like in entertainment mode, it was just, you know, I was just doing football stuff, you know, and um, the next year they just kind of reached out and basically said, hey, we want to basically offer you the role to be on Ballers. Um, so I did a role on Ballers as a stunt football player for the Kansas City Chiefs that was in 2019. And um, as I'm going through wardrobe, um, people were like, yeah, we've been trying to get at you for a minute. We want to use you for All-American. So I'm like, okay, cool. I'm thinking it's going to be one episode, you know, just, you know, go out there and do some football stuff. Um, that ended up turning into a whole season of work. Um, so wow. I did seven episodes, um, season two, um, basically doing like all the football scenes, kind of mixing and matching teams and whatnot. And um, it was pretty cool. Um, just being on set, it really kind of uh, let me see things differently. Like I'm seeing people that are um, really making money out here and really um, getting roles, you know, as athletes and whatnot. And I'm thinking who better than me as a professional athlete than to take these type of roles, you know? So, um, you know, I kind of got the acting bug, you know, being on set with like Tate Diggs and stuff, watching him do his lines. Um, that's been a blessing. It's, it feels like it's almost like a paid internship. You know what I mean? Like to go out there and watch these, uh, I guess big time actors, you know, uh, be in their elements and whatnot. I, I get to learn from them, you know, pretty much uh, all the time now. Um, and to sit there and watch. So when it's my turn, you know, I'm gonna take advantage of it, you know? But um, yeah, after that, I ended up getting into a, um, a bunch of background stuff. So I got with Central Casting and um, they started using me a lot. I probably worked maybe like 12 shows in three months in fall of 2019. Wow. Um, yeah, it was, it was getting crazy. You know, I worked on a Broke, Mom, a SWAT, um, Snowfall, a Snowfall joint just dropped, I wanna say last week or so, you know what I mean? I was one of the gunmen on there. I was actually gonna be like, a, one of the recurring gunmen on there, um, uh, one of Scully, uh, Scully's crew members. And um, I had to turn it down because I was still in professional football mode last year, you know? Um, so I had to go to camp for football um, and I had to turn the snowfall down. So I was going to play football last year um, as my last year, basically professionally. And um, I went out to uh, Chicago and I was playing out there and probably a week there, the pandemic hit. And it was like, dang, okay, what I'm gonna do now? At that point, it was almost like, you know, leading up into April, they were kind of like, all right, we've got two weeks of the pandemic, yada, yada. You know what I mean? We just go, everybody's quarantined, whatever, whatever. So I'm like, all right, we're gonna pick up the season again. And in the season, ended up getting canceled, all the sports getting canceled in the world and whatnot. And um, I just had to sit at home, you know what I mean? And at that point, I just made a decision that I was just gonna do acting. You know, and um, so I got serious about it. And uh, I ended up staying up one night and I reached out to over maybe like 600 managers out here in Los Angeles. Um, by the time I woke up, you know, I mean, I had emails, you know, so I signed the same day to a management company. Next week I had a commercial agent. And then um, all through, uh, actually our, uh, our common friend, Jesse, she sent me an acting class, an online acting class. And um, that's how I got into, uh, acting classes. Um, I met a dude out one day, uh, his name was Brian White. Um, he's an actor, he was on Stomp the Yard, uh, mm -hmm. some other, you know, he's on some major shows. And I, I had to ask him, um, 
you know, how'd you get into acting? And he was like, I told him who I was and my background in football. And he was like, you know, I started out the same way, basically um, as a background football player on the show, The Best Man. And um, after I did that, the casting director gave me an audition from there and I've been working 20 years from there. And so to like see somebody that really had the same experience that I had as a background football player and then be successful with it, it was almost like a sign from God, you know what I mean? Like that I can too be that, you know, uh, that type of success, you know what I mean? And um, he basically just told me, you know, to take acting as serious as I do football and to get in some classes and, uh, you know, get my headshots and real done and everything like that. And so, um, I took that and um, I was going to apply that the year after, you know, obviously, but life uh, kind of forced me to do it then and then and there. So as um, soon as the pandemic started, ended up uh, moving, um, opening back up, I uh, booked some roles probably uh, July, you know, last year. Uh, I booked two feature films right off the bat. And then I booked a short film with the Columbia School of Hollywood uh, Film School. I did a short with them that's going to drop this spring. I ended up doing a couple of uh, small time, um, like small like speaking roles in a couple of feature films that are gonna drop this year as well. Um, so there, I kind of got some, you know, principal roles uh, going. And I mean, now it's like I work so much, uh, it's really just my, I'm really just taking it seriously as my career now, you know what I mean? And, and I don't feel like it was something I was chasing. It was just something that was given to me. Yeah. That's, that's very interesting. Um, I, I was familiar with Brian White's story. I didn't, it just clicked though, when you said that he was playing background in The Best Man that I just realized, what? Like I had to go back and think about it when you said that, like, did he? But he, I didn't, I didn't even know that. So you just said that, but I knew that he started off um, in football. It's also interesting too, that you sort of talked about making that decision during the pandemic, right? Because for like a lot of people, the pandemic was just like, and, and it's still, it's not like we, I think we talk about it as if it's sort of over, but it's, we're still very much so in the thick of it. Um, and I was living in LA at the time when it first hit. So that was like a very scary moment for a lot of people in the industry. Like, oh crap, <laughs> like, what's right. about to happen? Like our lives are about to change. So it, it sounds like um, you took the opportunity, even in the midst of like, that sort of devastation to make a decision that ultimately paid off for you. And that's dope. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, we can only control what we can control. So I just tried to make the best of it and uh, take advantage of what I can. And um, I never really tried to let the pandemic or the thick of the pandemic really, you know, when we were all indoors, um, be, uh, be something negative for me. You know what I mean? Um, I was always working every day, you know, whether it was acting or, whatever I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm still active, you know what I mean? So um, I'm just trying to get it, you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> I want to switch gears just a little bit. Um, so now that you're in it um, and, and you've been behind the scenes and you're going out for these roles, do you feel um, that sometimes uh, you get typecast for a certain character, especially being a black male actor? Is that something you've experienced? Um something sort of something like that yeah uh but i've been able to do some cool roles i've had to play you know obviously black men we kind of get looked up uh looked at as like you know hoodlum and gangster type you know so i mean i have played that role i, I did that in snowfall and um you know some other things but it's uh it's i feel like i only take want to take roles that tell a story so if if playing that type of character tells a story behind it then i'm with it you know what i mean and, um, but I've been able to play like a nurse um, and some military roles and whatnot. Um, I just feel like we have to be able to show more of ourselves uh, being vulnerable, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, because we're often shown as like the angry, you know, side of, uh, of black men, you know what I mean? So, and that's where black people being able to tell their own stories matters, you know what I mean? So uh, we have to be able to tell our own stories our own way, you know, to be able to create those type of characters you know we don't have to wait for people to create those things for us yeah absolutely um and having the autonomy too as a uh artist to be able to decide what roles that you want to play um you know plays a major part in it too um the next thing that i would love to know um is just about how do you protect uh your your space like in your mental health especially during some of these roles that are um 
I'm not going to say like stereotypical, but some roles are tough. Uh, and you, you know, you have to get in a certain space to be able to really bring that character to life. So what are some tools that you use to be able to not bring that home with you in a, in a sense of like letting it consume you when you're not on set? Um, you know, I try to look at it as, you know, job and personal, you know, um, in football the same way. When I played football, I created a character for myself, you know what I mean, to be on the field. And when I was off the field, I was a different type of way. You know, obviously in the game of football, we're very, you know, aggressive and high speed and whatnot. So I had to go into a mode that was um, not who I am usually, you know what I mean? So when I act, I try to do it the same way. You know, I have to understand that this is just a character, you know what I mean? This is not me. I can put myself into the character, but don't take that home. You know what I mean? I don't want to act like um, the character that I'm portraying, you know, um, but I can see how some of these roles can play a mental impact on people, um, especially if you're playing a very um, emotional role or roles that deal with trauma and traumatic experiences, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was listening to an a interview that Lakeith Stanfield did talking about um, his role as Bill O'Neill and Judas and the Black Messiah. Right. Um, so that's, that's sort of what sparked that question. Uh, Cause when you do have to play sort of a dark role, um, I can't imagine how tough that <laughs> that can be, you know, to separate character from reality. Right. Yeah, it's uh it's it's different, you know what I mean? I I try to listen to music to get me there. Um, you know, you often hear about artists that or actors that like maybe listen to role uh, music to portray their roles. Um Daniel Ezra, he listens to Nipsey Hustle, you know what I mean, to mm -hmm. get a character for his role in All American. Um mm -hmm. so I do that, you know, I use music as a as a way to get me right or I'll watch movies that um, portray that type of character that I'm trying to portray and take things that I like and, um, you know, to continue to grow. Yeah. So what's next for you? Do you want to get your hand in writing, directing maybe one day or what, what's your goal? Um, man, I'm trying to do it all. Um, so I'm actually working on a web series right now. We're actually working on um, two web series that we're going to try to create. And I think they're going to be pretty dope. Um, so I definitely want to be able to write and create my own stuff. Um, so that's definitely next. Um, I'm about to go shoot a movie in uh, Alabama. So it's going to be pretty dope. Um, that'll drop later this next year. So um, just finished working on the uh, Colin Kaepernick project, uh, Colin Black and White. I was a stuntman on there. Um, so I got some stuff coming up as well. Um, I definitely would like to try to get on some TV sitcoms, um, you know, maybe some co-star roles and, uh, speaking lines whatnot so that'd be uh that'd be what i'm trying to pursue next and obviously creating my own opportunities and just kind of trying to connect with more people um more creators you know and just see what god has next for me yeah i always like to ask to um creatives what growing up what kind of exposure that did they have to people of color that also work in this industry so did you know any actors or and i mean obviously it may be different because you're from california Right. So maybe a little different than for me who grew up, you know, in the South. Um, but did you have any exposure to any actors or writers or directors or producers growing up? You know, not really. Like it wasn't something that was so much around me. Um, my stepdad, he does um, movies and whatnot. He's done like stunt. Um, it's in movies like Transformers. He was a military uh, personnel there. Um, so he's been in a few different projects, but it wasn't something that was like every day um, or something that I was even trying to pursue. So to be here now is just like a whole 360 of what I really was trying to do in life, you know? And now that you're here, um, how do you think that can change as far as like the next generation, right? Like people who may be watching it, who are looking up to you or um, like the Daniel Ezra's or et cetera, like, what do you think can change to, to you know, bridge that gap, to show that exposure that there are people that look like us who are working in this industry? Yeah, I think just continuing to, to uh, put things on film, you know, and do more projects. I think now even more so, um, people are seeing that there's opportunities through sports. You know, I never knew that people were getting paid to be football players or athletes or, you know, getting cast in these type of roles to do this stuff. Um, so that was never a thought for me, you know what I mean? Um, there's so many opportunities out there for people, especially for us, you know, and I feel like now more so, so than ever, the industry is looking for black voices to be heard. Um, so black stories to be told. 
and that's creating more opportunities for more black creators to put more content out. And so I just think it's the perfect time to be creative. And, you know, I think establishing um, our own youth and our own projects is gonna be big for us as well. Developing them, creating programs for them to uh, become artists, actors, whatever they wanna be, you know what I mean? Um, I think it's time for us to really start creating the roles that we wanna see on TV. Absolutely. Um, final question, would you ever go back to being a full-time football player if opportunity presented itself? Are you locked in and, and being an actor? Yeah, um, I've had some uh, people reach out to me to actually continue to play football and I've turned them down each time. You know, um, I'm pretty much done with the football aspect of life. Wow. You know what I mean? Um, I got out of it what I needed to get out of it. You know, I got a good four years of professional football, so it was cool for me and it served its purpose, you know? So now I'm just on some, um, what can I do next? What can I do with it? You know, um, I'm on to the next thing, you know? And uh, being able to play football on TV, I mean, obviously it's not the real thing, but it, it's still cool to be able to uh, use that to connect with people and to uh, portray it on TV. It's pretty, it's pretty dope. Um, but yeah, right now I'm just letting God use me and um, I'm just going with the flow. That's perfect. That's all you can do. <laughs> That's all you can do. Well, thank you so much, Omar. We definitely look forward to seeing more of you um, on the screen and, and hope one day, hopefully behind the screen, uh, if that's your goal. Absolutely. So I appreciate it. Um, I'll definitely make sure that I link your IG info in the description box. So um, y'all can make sure that you go and follow Omar. Definitely check out this season of All American. Um, Snowfall, another great show. And yeah. we look forward to keeping up with you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. And I appreciate you uh, talking to you. I'll be talking yeah. to you. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah. All right.